What's going on, crew? We are back at Westpac with the one and only Mark Baker. We are going to have us a great time today. I got the original crew. You already know Maki, me, Tone, Earl, and we are going to get us a lesson to update on where everybody has been, seeing how we're looking, things that we're doing better, things we can improve on. Uh, make sure you drop in your broomsticks. We got a lot of cool things coming. It really helps us if us, you like and subscribe and share this stuff, you know, with everyone that you know. But yeah, man, we out here. It's summertime. We're going to have us a ball today. Let's get it. Bowling is a jigsaw puzzle. When people walk in that door, it's always a jigsaw puzzle. What are the four things that make up the border of a jigsaw puzzle? The Baker family, we're big jigsaw puzzle people. There's consistency on top. There's timing on the bottom. You've got accuracy and you got balance. The four borders. Invariably, the people that want to walk in my door, what do they want to work on? Rev rate and release. I always see that as the middle puzzle of a piece. So how do you do it? The borders we all talk about. But what happens to jigsaw puzzles? Most people don't finish them because the borders are easy to talk about, but do the middle of the border? That's his markers. Nobody else in bowling has your markers. Everybody bowls different. Everybody understands the borders, the four things you want. Now our job is to find the markers that go inside and we get done. The last piece is always a release and it always fits. Jigsaw it. puzzle, figure out the borders, and then how do you build the markers inside the jigsaw puzzle? That's where I live as a coach and that's what I like, finding the markers for everybody individually because they're all different. So watch, watch your balance. So the hardest thing to do in bowling is, after you get warmed up, not to do more than that. <laughs> yeah. If you could just stay in that balance, or when you're warming up, you're just walking up and letting go. That's really all bowling is. That was perfect balance. The ball went right to the spot. Now you don't need to do any more than that. There is no more. There is no more better. You can only knock them down once. They don't give you bonus pins because the head pin flew faster. When somebody asks you what you bowled in league, you know what they did? They don't even hear your answer. You're like the peanuts person on the cartoon. Hey, dude, what'd you bowl tonight? Wah, 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 wah. That's what they're hearing. You know why somebody asks you what you bowl in league? Because they want to tell you what they shot. Exactly. Yeah, look at it. you're just you're on your left leg when the ball hits the pins. Yeah. When people throw it and their arms swinging and they're just watching. Look at his arm swing, but his body's not moving. That's the universal move. It's actually a slide in my can bakes PowerPoint. When somebody throws a good, they sit there, their arm swings, they don't move. Usually they strike though, bro. <laughs> I know what happens. And they take a step straight back. Watch. Straight back. All right. Bowlers can't even stop themselves. But you know what I did learn from the last time I saw you? I learned to stop being afraid of 10 pins and leaving them because I have left a lot more 10 pins. The, the better last you few get, months. the more you leave. Oh man, once Nobody I. Nobody has left more flat tens and ringing tens in the history of our sport than Walter A. Williams Jr. Yeah. Just ask him. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. See or it looks softer. Well, your arm's not so fast. So when okay. bowlers do it correctly as a coach, mm -hmm. because the tricky part of coaching is I have no feel in your shot. Yeah. I have a lot of feel when I bowl, and then once it's off your hand, it's all feel to me. It turns into me throwing the ball. Okay. But when you're bowling, all I see is markers. And invariably, when somebody throws it good, I don't ever notice your arm. <laughs> and when somebody throws it bad, all I see is your arm. Mm -hmm. So that's when I know your hand is soft. When so, people's balance are good, their arm doesn't reroute. Uh, Pearl that you know is a little bit more angular. I'm not gonna move too much because I don't want to assume it's gonna hook 40 boards. The hardest thing to teach bowlers. That was a decision that wasn't a guess. So like, no, no, I'm throwing it good. I just aced three shots. I'm going to the pearl. I'm gonna move two left. My hand's gonna get softer. Throw it the same place. Mm -hmm. That was the decision, so the shot had confidence. Mm. The whole reason of the Baker box, and I try to explain that, if you have a spot down lane that you believe in, mm -hmm. you're getting the hardest thing to teach in bowling, feedback. Mm. I hit my target, I was in balance, that felt good off my hand. That didn't do the right thing. I need to move or switch balls. Those are decisions. Ah, missed left. Real quick. 
I can feel that. Out of the arm. Yeah. So your legs didn't get ahead of your swing, mm -hmm. so your arm tried to make up for it. Mm. Completely offline, hand over the top. And that's the audible that I feel like. That's the athlete saying. and you want to get ahead of yeah. it. Yeah. That's you want to strike. And I can hear, feel it in my head. So that's where, when you taught me the timing with talking right. and hearing my steps. I don't know if you guys saw that video, but. Yeah, you pretty much almost skipped a step on that one. Right? Yeah. Your and feet when got I so quick, right? the fourth step, then your swing has to make up for happened. your right leg, right? Not a okay. swing. So the video talks about that a lot. I mean, the timing spot's what I've made a living on the last mm -hmm. 15 years. It's not going away. It's where every bowler tends to get to, so. One of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of people know when their timing is off, right? But they don't know if they're early or they're late. Invariably, everybody that comes here tells me they're late, and invariably, everybody's early. <laughs> I've never had a two-hander ever late. They've all been early. Yeah. I say I might have bowlers who are late, how I measure timing. I might have uh, five a year, five bowlers who are actually late out of the so the majority of people are the early. The 2,000 people I'm going to coach this year. So if you ever feel like you're moving too fast, it's really a situation. No, because everybody else measures measures timing in the push away. Mm. So I've, I've never done that. Okay. I was very fortunate when I first started getting into coaching. I had a lot of success with Chris Barnes and Tommy Jones. Mm -hmm. Well, Tommy drops it pretty quick, and Chris didn't move at all the first two steps. <laughs> so compared to everybody that taught it, well, they, he was late, he was early. I'm like, yeah, they're on TV every week. They're both first-team All-American every year you're measuring timing in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. So I tried to find a spot that those two matched up. And at that time, I thought Carolyn Doran Ballard had the easiest game to teach. I always loved her game. It's fundamentally correct. It's fundamentally sound. Her record, she was the bowler of the decade. Mm -hmm. It's just the right way of bowling. Yeah. So I would always use Carolyn, but guys didn't like being, being compared to girls. I'm like, but she's better than you. So I started measuring all three of those bowlers. Yeah. And then when their slide foot got flat in front of their head, their swings were all in the same place. Mm. So then you could start different. Everybody starts different. And it's that spot where you see the yeah. pose where you have. Yeah, that right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the spot. That's the spot that's, everyone's you know, aiming every, to you know, They to. all get to, you know, it's, it's all the. So when you get there, what it does, when you're in the timing spot, now mm -hmm. my right leg and my right hand are talking to each other and my core doesn't move. Mm. That's what you see. Every good shot looks the same. Yeah. Because if you're early, you go up. I call that moving the air up. Or if you're early and you move the air down, all those affect my hand. Mm. When you're in time, it's the best way to keep my head quiet. So now watch my head. Now watch my hand. It never moves. No. No, my timing is early and my head goes down. My head takes my shoulder forward. My thumb's got to come with it. So the timing spot is the best place to be in balance yeah. and to be accurate. Mm -hmm. The power is always the benefit. I never teach the power first because Elaine sequenced 40 feet of accuracy or 45 feet of accuracy, only 15 feet of hook or power. So you gotta really be accurate to use the power. Mm -hmm. That's what Lamaki would have to work on. He's got it covered at the, 15 foot, at the last 15 feet. He has to get much more consistent the first 45. Mm -hmm. Like every two-hander that walks in the door, yeah. pretty much shows up with a great release and a lot of power. Balance and consistency. One-handers try to find more power by having better timing so their release gets more consistent so their ball hits the pins better. So with me having an approach much like a two-hander, just since you mentioned it, I realized when you had me focus on the, you know, hearing my steps and the fourth step not being something that's so non-existent. The four steps, your power steps. So if your four step's non-existent, that'll be your power source. If that's your power yeah. source, you can't be accurate. And it feels like it's in slow motion sometimes, honestly. You're waiting on like it, Like right? I'm literally, and that's the waiting on it. So that's something I don't think I had ever heard before was actually waiting on it. And that stops you from being early. And Bill O'Neill, when the first time Bill O'Neill ever said it where it goes, he goes, when I'm in time, I have time and I can do whatever I want to the ball. I'm like, I'm just gonna use that expression for the rest of my coaching career. That was one of the first things I told Tone when you helped me with my balance. I was like, I feel like I can do anything with my hand. Bill explained it the best, and then you know, Bill was a really good bowler prior to coach him. <laughs> still and obviously, is. still is. That dude can, you know, he has probably the simplest, excellent game in the world, Bill O'Neill. Yeah, okay. And he's a good dude. Oh, have you seen the Ion Pro yet? I have. Okay, so they're comparing this to the phase two and some of the favorites people have had over the years. I'm curious to know what you feel about this compared to some of your favorite balls that you've seen too. See, but the dip on that ball isn't as high. It is. So I think that ball allows you to stay farther right and it not does. have to move as fast as early. Right? And that's helped my game, I feel like. I think for me, it's a good benchmark ball because I have a tendency to want to get left so much. Any ball that lets you, like that was a good shot, mm -hmm. kind of rolled over the holes a little bit down yeah, lane. I heard so it. that would be a hole two and two right. Okay. That wouldn't be a little bit. That ball never slowed down. Yeah. Like I said, again, it's the differential. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to flare as much. So it's going to be a little smoother on the back, mm -hmm. which is what everybody tries to, I think, hook it too much. Yeah. 
people are much better than that than they are going fifth arrow to 10 mm -hmm. and they're going to 12 to 5. I used to have a really hard time keeping the ball in front of me. You can keep it. So you thought that ball was in front of you. Here we go. <laughs> Here's the myth. All right. Uh oh. Here we go. Let's do some math. 39 boards on a lane. That ball went really straight. Where'd it land? It landed right there, which is about 18 lay down. Okay. So it's 18 in the front. All right. And the break point. Right about there. Break point was 6.7. So right there is, that'd be 12, that would be 11.6. So then where'd the ball finish? It got to the pocket high flush. That's gonna be, for Walter Ray, we'll say that's 18 board. So from six back to 18, that's another 11. So that ball covered 22 boards. Wow. It covered 22 boards. Wow. But that's a different way of looking at it. I would have never. You know why bowlers don't way. see that? Because we don't see the lay down. Yeah. So when you throw the ball, as early as you're gonna pick it up is the arrows. I always picked it up. I never saw it, the arrows. I picked it up at 30 feet. Your ball was here. You saw it there and it got there and it rolled straight. Yeah, that so ball I didn't only hook. see it when it's I'm watching as a coach traveled. going, wow, whoa, that ball really hooked on the back. You're going, I threw that ball straight. Norm Duke can throw a ball straight. Yeah. Liz Johnson can throw a ball straight. Wow. Norman, right. Liz, Norman Liz could do stuff that not many people in the world can do. You're right. That's I why Liz is regarded as the GOAT. <laughs> she can do stuff nobody else can do. So there's the thing that's big. Everybody wants to see it hook, but that ball gives you a little bit of hold. Everybody's tendency is to miss left. Mm -hmm. So a ball that you can miss a little inside and it lays off and it still hits that hard, yeah. that's when your best scores come. You're right. My spread is so much closer too, by the way. I think my balance helps me keep my release a lot more consistent yeah. and everything just feels more consistent. Your hand's just adding rotation at the end. Yeah. It's not trying to redirect it because your legs are out of it. When I first came here, there's a video and um, we can end on this. So. Barnsey posted something on his story about uh, people were asking how you can tell the difference between your axis tilt. He goes, well, chances are if your hand's at your left ear, it's negative, and if it's at your right ear, it's positive. And I never thought about that, and I, I tied him up. I was like, that's the most simple way that you could have ever said, got to keep it simple. You're asking the right guy. He's, he's way know? above my head. And just to think about that, though, last time I was here, or the very first time I came, I have a picture of me following through, and my hand is literally... Because you were so open. If you threw the ball where your body was aiming on the top of your backswing, you would have averaged zero. Every ball would have gone the gutter. So you were coming over the top to get the ball to actually go forward yeah. because your body was facing that way. Okay. You were gonna hook it. <laughs> One way or another. Well, you see that all the time. Well, now the lanes are hooking, I have to move in. Yeah. So now I'm gonna get my, you know, I'm gonna get my feet open and my shoulders. Well, now you're aiming three lanes to the right. The mm. pins are, right. last time I looked, are over here. Mm -hmm. This breastplate determines where your swing goes. Mm -hmm. So no matter how much you move left, Never let your breastplate get past your, your break point. Because that way if you walk up, if you, you know, if you get from behind me, I, mean, I don't bowl anymore, but I was always pretty good at playing inside. I'm way left. My swing is gonna be lined up. When I get here, my swing and my body is gonna be aiming at that break point. So bowlers get way, they get their feet, the left foot, they take five steps. They get this foot aiming like 45 degrees. I'm gonna throw it to the right. No, you're gonna throw it dead left. Because you're gonna walk this way and you're gonna do this. So, mm. you know, you gotta keep this part going forward. That's changed. I've noticed that just right. looking at it. So I appreciate you, man, as always. As always, dude. Here you go, the new hybrid. So it's Belmonte for three steps. And then it's Doherty for two steps. Why? That left hand controls this part. Because with no thumb on the ball, being just one-handed, you got to be pretty strong. So if you bowl two-handed for three steps, then you turn into Doherty for two steps. That's kind of the best of both worlds. So what, I, what I'm trying to do is go out and drop back with yep, it. Yep, and then let and it go. And then let it go, yeah. Right. Oh, we got action! We got action! Yeah! Belmo, Belmo, Doherty. If Pistol Pete keeps bowling, how's his average gonna go up? Easy. When he starts getting this gap, Closer and closer and closer. This average you go up 10 pins about every three boards, it gets closer. Okay. Because, because nobody is fingertips and toes, right? Because nobody's strong outside their shoulder. If I asked you to pick up a bag of sand, you would never pick it up out like that. You pick it up right underneath. So the strength is when the ball is under your shoulder. So he's got all that outside his ankle. As this ball goes closer and closer and his swing gets more and more under his shoulder, his ball speed will go up and his accuracy will get better and his average will go up.
Little, little out on that? Nope, that was straight down. Huh? That's where you get real, real hesitant. Uh -huh. So your arms get, so when your arms get really, really slow through here, then you get fast here. Those go down. When you were first worn up, it was much more of a swing. And then your trajectory's out, do it again. Gotcha. Because those balls land by the foul line, that makes the, the core does not lay down in the right place. So it's more of a smooth rhythm to start. That way your ball lands farther in the lane, and that's when you see that shape down lane you want to see. Got it. Don't get too slow, and then you get too fast. Much better. So that was on the lane, so the ball hooked. Right. Yep. That felt so way can, better. If you get here, you'll see. So the first thing I notice is your timing is way better than it was, because mm -hmm. your arms aren't so fast. Yeah. So now, still coming off a little early, but see the ball landed about right there. Yeah. Your previous shot landed here. Because the ball lands out farther, your hand turns it later. So you'll actually see the core change down there. When your ball's landing on top of the foul line and your hand's on top of it, in essence, you're coming over the top of it, the core's gonna lay down immediately. Yeah. And you're not gonna, that's when they miss right, they don't hook down lane. Okay. Do it again. Yeah, I do feel like I'm getting the ball out a lot better. No, last time, that's what we worked on, but your, your rhythm's better. Right. Yeah. Much better, much better. That's just, you're just too far left. I think so, yeah. You just move a little bit to the right, but that was a much better shot. See your hands behind it. See, now you're throwing it on the lane. Here we go. Yeah. Here you go, ball's landing out. There you go. You don't stand up near as much. My, the biggest difference I, I notice when I'm, when I'm bowling is where my hand is at. Like, so, like so, for instance, on that one, it looked okay, but it felt like I'm trying to do too much with it as opposed to just letting yeah, it Yeah, when go. you see your ball not hooked down lane, human nature says, I'll help the next one. Exactly. So don't exactly. stay there and try to throw it better, I think is the worst thing anybody could do. Yeah. That means you weren't trying. Yeah. If you were trying 100%, there is no better. Yeah. Instead of trying to throw it better, just move a bit to the right and don't try to have to make it hook. Exactly. Because when you throw the ball good, it hooks automatically. There you go, yeah. It's definitely something I need to work on. Trying to make the ball do something it doesn't want to do doesn't work. So move your feet two or three right, your eyes one or two right. Good rhythm, get it on the lane. Much closer. Much well, look, better, you see, you didn't come up out of the shot because look how much better your balance is at the end. Invariably, see, you didn't come up hardly at all. See that? Yeah. There's no lifting on the bottom of your swing, so there's yeah. no dropping. Yeah. That's your rhythm. So when your rhythm, when your rhythm gets too slow, all of a sudden you want to have the rev rate and the ball speed. So what happens is you have to lift up to generate that power. I see. When your rhythm's better, you just throw it out, and you finish in balance like that. So that, that one, that one, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to lift up. I'm no, trying. because you're in time. You're throwing it out and turning it later. There See how go. little your hand turns? Yeah. That's the biggest myth in bowling, how much your hand has to rotate. Yeah. Your hand barely doesn't rotate at all, but look how much shape you get in the back of the lane. And to be honest the with you- The balls are good. I feel like the more I People try to, in Utah know what they're doing. Yeah, the more I try to do to the ball, the less it does from experience. Oh, the ball will do its job. Exactly. That's probably the biggest change from my era to now. Back, if you wanted your ball to change direction, it was right here in your form and your wrist. Yeah. Now they got a, you know, I had a three ounce core, mm -hmm. little hockey puck. Yeah. So the, my wrist was my, was my core. Now the core is a big thing, so you just have to use it correctly. Just allow it to do what it's supposed to do. Right. Yeah. Nope. Ah, inside, nope. That's, that's standing up. Inside, yeah. Watch where that ball lands. It's going to land right by the foul line. There you go, that's where that ball landed. Ah. Balls that land there don't strike. That's the first time I've been able to see the difference back to back. Right. So that's when you get too slow in your rhythm and you try to make it all happen last step. So where, where is my, where is my, just, just, be, just be faster up Here, put the, put the ball down. You yeah. bowl, I want to see what your arms do without, without, you just go. Okay. That's it, see that's, so that was, they never moved, they never moved, they never moved, and then they moved. Now I'll move your arms. Okay, gotcha. Really. There'll be some rhythm involved. Oh yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. saying you were holding it. It yeah. was not moving, it was really, really, really. Yeah, okay. He literally went. Got you. Yeah, I got you to move. Yeah. 
See, you don't have to have all those tats to have rhythm, brother. <laughs> so, guys, Led Zeppelin, The Who, Guns N' Roses, no auto tune. That's why, me, that's why Keith Richards sounds so bad. It was real. Uh. There we go. He knows where you go. So Earl has attained something that may be the hardest thing to attain in sports. Confidence. <laughs> Earl's waiting on it on the bottom of the swing much better than I've ever seen him do it. So every shot he's thrown since he's been here. So what I'm talking about is this. A guy I've had the pleasure of coaching a long time ago named Bill O'Neill said it the best. When I'm in time, I have time. That's this. Watch how soft Earl is right here. His timing's beautiful. He's got all the time right there. So the more time he has here, look how good his balance is. So now Earl's in time, so he has confidence. Every shot's coming off the same. So that's what I noticed. He's gotten his swing soft enough for his hands not doing much, so he's getting all that motion down lane. Because so much of what bowling is isn't at the foul line, so much of bowling is standing right here. You either think you can do it or you can't. And in both situations, you're correct. So now Earl's waiting on it, he's throwing it good. He knows here, if I just do my job, it's gonna be a good shot. He's not trying to throw it good, his confidence level is up, and that's the hardest thing to teach in sports. Because I'm an athlete. Oh my God. That line, like a... The harsh pearl. 15, right? He got skinny fingers. That's okay, I can make it work. All right, let me adjust from what I see Gage throw. Let me see what I can do. Nope. I can't grip it. That's just how it is. So if you were to switch to a ball like that, what would he be thinking? If he I think he moved too much. What I think people do is sometimes this ball is just going to hook more. It hooks harder on the back. It didn't hook more. So he made a big move. I'd have made the move in half at best. Uh huh. He thought that ball was going to hook a ton more. It's not going to hook more. It's just going to hook later and harder. It's a it's what you perceive, or the harsh reality. Will, you know, it doesn't hook as much. It just hooks sooner, sooner. and smoother. Same amount of boards covered, but the farther it, the break point is and the sharper it is, that's perceived as more hook. It's just later hook. Later. Okay. I'm gonna try Rich's because his holes are a little bit bigger. So go half of what you. Okay, so I was sitting, standing here for the lining blackout. So yeah, let's... That baker box still, still should come into play. Okay. One board doesn't usually work too much. Right there. <laughs> I'll do a one board. That's got action. That's too good. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> was that it? <laughs> there again, when you do it right, that head pin falls last. Well, look at Earl on the bottom of the swing here. Let's watch it full speed on the big screen. Earl has figured out how to get his, like we talked about earlier, Rich, what I saw with you. His swing's never fast. His yeah. feet are faster than swing. All the stuff in the beginning, everybody throws the ball different. Nobody throws the ball the same. There are some markers I see as a coach, but the whole business of bowling is to get here. You want to see it on your fingertips at the end of your toe. I give as many lessons as anybody. Every lesson that the ball does the right thing, invariably that happens. It's not something I can teach, it's something that happens automatic. There's no thumb, thumb in, thumb out. When the ball's on your fingertips, into your toe, you add the rotation later, you have good launch trajectory, and more importantly, you're using the ball correctly. Yeah. It can't really go through the pins any better than that. Yeah. That's just straight back to the pins. So it always comes down to timing. His body is ahead of his swing. He's bowling functionally. Yeah. Look at his balance. I think a big contributor I, when I used to uh, like fall over, I like lose balance, was when I, my feet were obviously faster than my body. Mm -hmm. So I'm like compensating and trying to catch myself. But. Right, your swing was quicker than your feet. Yeah. So that's why people have fast feet. Very rarely do I see any, I mean, I might see one lesson a year who somebody says, I might say, you know what, your feet are too fast. I never say it. I say it on a daily basis. Wow, your swing is early and your swing is quick. So you understand what balance is. He, I mean, he gets where he's trying to get the athletic position and trying to get there at the bottom of your swing. So if your swing is quick and early and short, your body has to run to get to that spot, but then you hit the brakes and you decelerate and that's when you throw it bad. 
That's why good timing is, everybody recognized it because like, ah, oh, that came off so easy. I'm in great balance. Those are the two, the two most common terms is easy. I think like outside factors, like for example, like like you talking and be like, come on, and then you know, like the mental game, mm -hmm. that messes with the smallest thing, which messes up like the neck, like a domino effect, essentially. So what was the first thing he said to you though that he, he noticed different about you when he saw you now? It was confidence. Yeah. So keep that confidence, yeah. and none of that other stuff matters. Bowling's mental. Remember that, kids. <laughs> All right. Very good. Next. Good so Lamaki's got a unique situation. Everybody in the room today, he's got by far the highest rev rate, but he should be playing lanes farther right than everybody else. Why? He also has the most ball speed. Rev rate doesn't just mean your ball's gonna hook. His rev rate's over 600. But when he gets it over 600, his accuracy isn't as good. When his rev rate's in that 580, 590, he actually has some shape on the lane. But because he throws it so hard, instead of being left to the people because my rev rate's higher, no, but your ball will hit harder because your rev rate's up. He should actually be slightly rep for everybody else because they all throw much softer. So the rev rate doesn't always equate to the most hook. By far the most rev rate, he should be right of the field. I gotta walk like two mile an hour slower. <laughs> but your head didn't move, you hit the right break point down lane, the ball had time to slow down, go through the pins. That's still enough power. That'll be the most power I'll see it here in all month. Mm -hmm. You know, I know which pros are flying in, which aren't. So <laughs> unless unless Jesper's flying in from Sweden, you're good. Jesper broke my pins. He owes me money. <laughs> yes, Lamaki. Now your rev rates to your advantage because you're hitting a target first. Okay. If you can't hit a target, it doesn't matter what your rev rate is. That's like saying I can drive at 350, but you literally cannot keep it in the driving range. Some old guy that can drive at 270 every time will shoot 75. Okay. Now, if you're Rory McIlroy, you can drive at 350 and know where it's going, you make a lot of money. Yeah, but so your rev rate's high, but the last two shots, your accuracy was good, so then your rev rate was outstanding. Okay. 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 The accuracy always comes before the power. Okay. I want to throw it again, actually. It starts up later down lane. Okay. The harsh feels like um, it rolls earlier, and I can roll this one earlier through the fronts. And that one, I have to let it, um, let it take its time down the lane. So people with higher rev rates, they fluctuate within the rev rate range. That's what so that's what makes a, a person like EJ Tackett, to me, stand out. Okay. When he can be on TV, when you're nervous bowling for those majors, and it's 5'10", 5'10", 5'10", 5'11", 5'10", 5'10". It's not so much that the five number is so huge for EJ, it's the fact that his spread is so minuscule. I mean, mm -hmm. he'll have seven, eight shots in a row with almost the same rev rate. That makes the five magnified. Right. So you've had a 580, a 610, and a 540. Okay. And you've had, you know, one that didn't hook, one that hit dead flush, one that hooked too much. Right. So if, if my, my advice to you was find a way to get your speed and your rev rate to be much more consistent, because okay. it's super high already. The two shots that you hit the pocket, the pins exploded. Mm -hmm. You just have to hit the target more and control your rev rate a little better. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I don't have to make down pickup at all. This <laughs> one, I so need... You should never throw the ball you're trying to make pickup, because okay. you're going to grab it. Okay. Sorry. Always throw the ball that you don't have to pick up. Okay. You can throw a little firmer. Firmer? Because it actually picks up. You can throw it the way you really want to throw it. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm Lamaki. I can do it again. There we go. <laughs> so that's a classic case, case of someone wanting a ball change in a situation. But you are helping understand the logic of you want to throw what's going to get what the you good at? easiest. What are you good at? Okay. Are you good at throwing it hard? Or are you good at getting soft and going left? Right. Most people that throw and it hard are. He he's obviously better at throwing it hard. <laughs> so <laughs> that makes sense, right? And he's yeah. still going straighter than everybody else. Mm -hmm. But it's not straight, but it's straighter than everybody else. So it's, yeah. the tricky part is watching other people bowl and then picturing yourself compared to them. Mm -hmm. Two handers and one handers, it's a, it's a different game. Yeah. So that's why he has to just see it. He has to be able to do what he can do the best. Coaching is about me telling him what to do. Coaching is about me telling him what he can do. Mm -hmm. So I got him to do things he could do. And the next thing you know, now he's trying, okay, I got it. I, now all of a sudden we got the right ball in our hand. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I could repeat that. Yep. 
Ah. But see, that's the problem. As soon as he thinks about throwing it hard, then he lost his balance. All right. And I could see his shoulder. Look how far, how much farther down your shoulder is. So the problem is of what he said three minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, I can go back to being Lamont. Yeah. He thinks that's slow. Yeah. Nobody's going to throw it faster than that this month. Yeah. So it's only slow for him. If he walked into a 40 lane bowling center and he was bowling, everybody in the place was like, wow, that guy's throwing it really, really hard. And he's thinking, man, I can't throw it any slower than this. <laughs> so it's not, it's not about slow or fast, it's what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So for him that's slow, but for the world of bowling that's lightning fast. Yeah. That's the tricky part of bowling. Understanding yourself. The okay. best bowlers understand themselves. But we talked earlier, probably the guy that understands himself better than anybody that none of us even get is Anthony Simonson. He understands what he can do, so he just does what he wants in spite of what everybody thinks is the right thing to do. And at the end of the day, he tends to have a lot of smiles and hold trophies. <laughs> yeah. And he gets right. to go to that expensive Korean car barbecue in Las Vegas. Uh -huh. When they know I'm you by the first name when you walk in the door, that means you eat there a lot, right, Anthony? <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Yikes. What happened? The two things that started it, you were in balance and you hit a target. Okay. You're, in your mind, it's about rev rate and ball speed. Those are the benefits of what you do. But the balance and accuracy first, then your rev rate and your speed will be hugely beneficial. But if those are what you focus on, then they're not helping you. It's always about accuracy. It's always about balance. All right. Balance is by far the most boring thing to coach. I know I do it for a living and it's people hate it until they do it like, wow, now I'm getting my desired result. Every time. Balance is boring. It's also the most effective thing you can work on to become a better athlete and a better bowler. Okay. Mark Baker, markbakerbowling.com. Check out the video series. You definitely are missing out if you haven't yet. Always enjoy it. You guys are a blast. We never have a game plan. We always come up with something new. <laughs> Keep watching the videos. I'll see you on the lanes. <laughs>